Mishpocha, family and friends. Welcome. We welcome you to our home, to our Saturday morning Shabbat Torah study. Again, we welcome you and say Shabbat Shalom. Join us this morning as we rejoice in the Lord. So many people are concerned about the uneasiness in their lives and what's going on in America and in Israel and the world. But we say rejoice because the word of the Lord tells us to rejoice. And so in, in Isaiah 41, the Lord says to all of us, fear not for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So we need to all stay strong and be courageous in our God. And don't forget Psalm 91 verse 10, which says no evil will befall us, that he's going to send his angels to guard us in all our ways. So this morning, let us rejoice in the Lord and let us just know that he is Lord of our lives, Lord of the world, Lord of our families, Lord of our children. And so we are excited this morning as we come into his presence and Rabbi is going to speak to us about the Torah portion. How exciting, how blessed we are. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Again, it's just so wonderful being here. I love Shabbat. We were here last night for Arab Shabbat. But I love the day, Shabbat. It's so peaceful. It's so, it's so beautiful. And especially when you're in Israel, it's like everything just stops. And it's just, it's all about God. And you know, right here where we are, and right, I feel in our in our neighborhoods, I'm looking out into our neighborhood. It just seems to be so still. And that's the way it should be on Shabbat, because our focus should be on him, on his kingdom. It should always be that. But this day, this Shabbat is so beautiful. And if you're on this bit and if you're on this video, please send us a Shabbat Shalom. We asked that last night, and we'll ask it again today. Please send us a Shabbat Shalom with your email and or phone number and your prayer requests, because we pray for so many people who that we see online. Uh, we pray, and, and of course, in our local congregation, we pray for so many people the, the whole week that we just want to make sure we are praying for you. So there's lots of people on, we have people from all over the world, and there's lots of people on that, that I don't even know their names. So I need to know your name. So when you send it, your email and, and or your phone number, and send your name, and if and you have any prayer requests, please send, please send them. And also don't forget to like, follow, and share uh, your, your, our Facebook page. So um, this morning we begin this is Saturday is a Torah study. We begin with so a little bit of Shabbat liturgy. And we're using the Greenberg Siddur. We, be, we, we begin on page 39 and we read Yeshua. And with joy, you shall draw forth water from the fountains of salvation. And then we read, Matovu o halacha, Yaakov, Mishkanotecha, Yisrael. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. O Lord, through your abundant kindness, I will enter your house. In awe, I will bow down towards your holy sanctuary. O oh Lord, I love the house where you dwell and the place where your glory resides. I shall prostrate myself and bow, bend the knee before the Lord my maker. 
As for me, my prayers to you, O oh Lord, be at the right time. In your abundant righteousness, answer me with of your salvation. Amen. Amen. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of the Lord, your God. In it you shall not do any work. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in, in them, and rested on the seventh day. That is why the Lord blessed the this, this Shabbat day and hallowed it. Speak also unto the children of Israel, saying, Above all my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Amen. And we also say, Oh Lord, open our lips that our mouths may declare your praise. Hallelujah. And let us now say the blessing over Mashiach. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Natan Lano Et Derech HaYeshua B'Mashiach Yeshua. Amen. Amen. And we're, we stand and we face east. To us, east is straight ahead. But wherever east is, to stand and let's say the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echai. Baruch Shem Kavod Malchuto Le'elam Ve'ed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Amen. And we continue the Shema with the Viahafta, the Viahafta et Adonai Elohecha. Bechol avabako ubako nashiko ubako ma'adecha. Bahayu harvaim ho'ele asher anoki mitzavacha ha'om alavavecha. Bishanam tam lebenecha v'dibata bam v'shiftika v'veitecha. Uvlechika v'aderech u'shok v'ko u'kumecha. Ukshatam la'od ayidecha. Bahayu l'totofog fein einecha. Uktavtam amazuzot beitecha v'shorecha. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and let them be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And that is a prayer that we should be thinking about every day when we're in interactions with other people. If you want God's light to shine forth from you, then love your neighbor. Love God with or your heart, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. And then we say, Michamocha ba Elim Adonai, Michamocha Neda ba Kodesh, Norat Hilot, O Sefele. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? And who is like you, glorified in holiness? You are awesome in praise, working wonders, O Lord. Who is like you, O Lord? And the answer is, Ein Kamocha, there is none like him. And that's why we say, We give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy forever endures. And we, now we read the Amidah, the standing prayer, and we can read the Father's portion of the Amidah. And we say, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Velohei Avoteinu, Elohei Abraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohei Yaakov, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Vahanara, El Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Bekonei Hakov, Zochea Chasde Avot, Umevi Goel, Ibnei Benehem, Lama Anshemo Bahava, 
Melech Ozea, U Mashiach, U Magain, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magain Abraham. And what we read was, Blessed are you, Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, and God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God who bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers, and brings a redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, helper, savior, and shield. Blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Abraham. Amen. And we read the Gibor Adonai, the might of God. We say, Ata Gibor Le'alam Adonai Mechaye Metim Ata Rab Lahushia Mechachel Chaim Bechese Mechaye Metim Barachamim Rabim Someach Noflim Barofe Cholim Umatea Asurim Umchayem and Munato Lishene Afra Mitha Mocha Baal Gaburot Omi Dome Domelach Melech Meni Umchaye Umatsmiach Yeshua Mine Aman Atal Kayot Metim Barucha Ata Adonai Mechaye Ha Metim you, O oh Lord, are mighty forever. You raise the dead. You are mighty to save. You sustain the living with grace and resurrect the dead with abundant mercy. Uphold the fallen, heal the sick, set free those in bondage, and keep faith with those that sleep in the dust. Who is like you, master of mighty deeds? And who can compare to you, king, who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? And you are faithful to resurrect the day. Blessed are you, O Lord, who resurrects the dead. Amen. Amen. Nechadesh et shemcha ba'olam keshem shemach dishim oto bishmei marom kakatu al yad. Nevicha Bahara Ze El Ze Baama Kadosh 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 Adonai Sebaot Melokal Horetz Kavodo. We holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Those facing them say, Blessed. Blessed is the glory of the Lord from his abiding place. From your heavenly abode you will appear, O oh, our King, and reign over us for we wait for you. When will you reign in Zion? Soon, even in our days, may you dwell there forever and ever. May you be exalted and sanctified within Jerusalem, your city, from generation to generation and for all eternity. May our eyes see your kingdom as it is expressed in the songs of your might by the hand of David, your righteous anointed. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're just going to end with the Kaddish on page 61 and 62. Yikadal v'yikadash shmei rabah. Yamlikhmachute, <laughs> Damiram, the Amal, the Imru, Amen. O Sese Shalom, the Imram. Huya Se Shalom, Elena, the Alkol Yisrael, the Imru, Amen. Magnified and sanctified be his great name in the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days and during the life of the whole house of Israel, even swiftly and soon, and say, Amen. Let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored 
magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is he. Though he be high above all the blessings and songs, praises and consolations, which are uttered in the world and say, Amen. And may he who makes play, peace in his high places, make peace upon us and upon all Israel. And we say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So last night, we spoke, we began the Parsha for, for today. And we started reading, so we started reading Va'era. And the whole message was about who loves you? Who loves you? Just like Telly Savalas had, had, had used to speak that. Who loves you? Like Kojak would say. And except we didn't have, I didn't have a Tootsie Roll pop in my mouth like him, but I said, who loves you? Who loves you, baby? Who loves you? Well, we're gonna continue with today being more of a Torah study. And it's a Torah study in Vaera. And we're gonna read the uh, verses in, in Exodus chapter six, two through chapter six, five. And we read, Elohim El Moshe Elav Ani Adonai. Ba'era El Abraham El Yitzchak Ba'el Yaakov Ba'el Shaddai Ushmi Adonai Lo Nodati Lahem Vagam Vagam Hakamoti Et Briti Itam Letet Lahem et Eret, Kenaan et Eret, Megure Hem, Asher, Garu, Ba. And we finish with Vagam Ani Shemati et Naakat, Bene Yisrael, Asher Mitzrayim, Ma Avid, Ma Avidim. Otam va as et riti. And what we read what we read was Exodus, Exodus, Exodus chapter six, verses two through five. What we read was God spoke further to Moses and said to him, I am Adonai. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai. El Shaddai is the almighty God, the all-sufficient one. And um, Adonai is Lord, Hashem, or Lord, a yod heh vav And it, so it's Lord. But he appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, not as Adonai. And I'm putting a little asterisk because I'll come back to that in a couple of minutes. Yet, but my, yet by my name, Adonai, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their sojournings or their pilgrimage where they journey. Furthermore, I have heard the groanings, the groanings of B'nai Yisrael whom the Egyptians are keeping in bondage. So I have remembered my covenant. Therefore say to B'nai Yisrael, I am Adonai and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So he is showing us his love. When we say who loves you, we read in this, Parsha, all about God's love for us. If we read the end of last week's Parsha, read the end of last week's Parsha on uh, Exodus 5, verse 22. So Moses returned to Adonai and, and Adonai and said, Adonai, why have you brought evil on these? Is this why you sent me? 
Ever since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought evil on these people. For your people at all. You know, God has things at his perfect timing. And all of us go through trials and tribulations. Go, we all go through times of waiting. We know that God has promised us something. And we wait in faith. And Rachel and I have been through things like that many years in, in the Lord. Just different times. And we ask God. And at the right time, he answers us. Oh, just an example of that is with my book that I wrote uh, that was uh, published by um, Charisma. It's called The Talit, Experience the Mysteries of the Prayer Shawl and Other Hidden Treasures. And I knew God was asking me to write a book. And I had it in my heart for a while, but I, I just... I didn't want to do something if it, if it wasn't God. And I was waiting for God to answer me. So in my congregation, we had a fast for three weeks, as we always did every January. And um, it was two, day, two or three days before the end of the fast. And I said, oh, Lord, God, if you put that book on my heart, then you have to do something supernatural to show me so I will spend the time writing that book. And, and I, I prayed, and this is after a while, I had it in my heart, but then I prayed, and it was two to three days toward the end of the fast. And then the fast ended, and when the fast ended, I got a call from Stephen Strang, and everyone knows him, he's the CEO and founder, and, and um, head honcho of um, Charisma and all of their magazines and everything that they do, the podcast and everything that they do. And he called me, he says, hello, Rabbi Kluge. And I said, yes. He said, this is Steve Strang. So, and I had met him at different functions before, so I knew who he was. And I uh, said, oh, hey, Steve, how you doing? And he says, really good. He said, um, I have something that's going to sound a little bit strange to you, a little bizarre to you. So I said, okay, what is it? And he said, all of a sudden, about two or three days ago, God put on my heart and mind that I should be calling you to write a book for Charisma. And I said, wow, okay. I can answer you yes. I will be praying about it if I absolutely can answer you yes. So he joked. He said to me, oh, well, that's good. But how can you answer yes without getting the answer? And then I told him the whole story. And all he says, oh, my gosh, that's God being on time. And God is always on time. Yeah. He is always on time. And this is what we, this is what we see when we study the Parsha of Vaera that he is always on time because all of us need love and, and want to feel love. But there are some of us that just block ourselves from getting the love of God. We can receive it. God wants us to receive it. He pours it out upon us. But the way our minds work, we just, we just don't see we're blinded to it. And if you read the word consistently, you will just see God's love in this, God's love in this Parsha. And there's a, a, a little crisis, an ex-Orthodox crisis taking place in Israel. And I read, I read this by the Tal Rubin. He, he wrote this and I received it this week. And he, he just says that um, there's a phenomenon among the Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox Jews in Israel, a high percentage of them feel like they are dressed in a costume and they may be living within the, the Orthodox community, but they don't believe that that's for them anymore. And they still, some of them still believe in God and others don't, 
but they can no longer participate in the Orthodox society. What is it? What is it that they're missing? I believe if I would go and speak to them and I said, who loves your baby? I believe they wouldn't, they wouldn't know how to answer. And if I said, well, Hashem loves you, your God loves you, Yeshua loves you. I'm not talking about Yeshua. I would say to them, I'm not talking about Yeshua. Yeshua is a curse, is a curse. They use that those that are not believers in Israel, when they hear you're a believer in Yeshua, they'll say, oh, you believe in Yeshua? And the answer is no, I don't believe in Yeshua. I believe in Yeshua. So, so they haven't experienced the love of God. Oh, they might know a trillion things more and better than we do in, uh, than in, in, in their religion. And we're in the same religion, the Jewish religion. They, so they may know how to do things a little bit better and, and they may have their traditions down um, better and their prayers down better, their Hebrew, they live in Israel, their Hebrew better. But it's not about all those things. It's about the love of God. Amen. And today we have to understand that. And if you're watching today and your mind is not open because you think that um, God took a recess on giving you love, if you think that, then you have to say, Lord, forgive me, I am wrong. You don't change and you would never take a recess on giving me love because you love me because I am your child. So, so let's show some of, of God in this, in this Pasha as this Torah study. So in our lives, we face the battle of our will on a continual basis. It's our spirit man who lives within us because we have the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit within us. So we have that spirit man in us and we have the flesh in us, the world. When you mention the word Egypt, Egypt stands for the world and it stands for the dark kingdom. The spirit man or Yeshua stands for the kingdom of God, the light, the light has come. And, uh, and we have, we have this battle. And as uh, it says, as Rabbi Shaul said in Romans chapter seven, for that I do not understand what I am doing. For what I do not want, this I practice. But what I hate, this I do too. Pro, uh, for the good that I want, I do not do. But the evil that I do not want, this I practice. But if I do what I do, no longer I am doing it, but it's sin that swells in me. That's from Romans 7, 15 and 19 and 20. Romans 7, 15 and 19 and 20. So in Parashat Ba'era, we see a dramatic confrontation between the God of Israel and the ruler of the known world, Pharaoh, the ruler of the, of the, of the whole world. He's the king of Egypt and, and um, he's the most powerful man in the world. But there's one little thing a little teeny thing, it's really a major big thing, but even as a little teeny little thing, it could cause the, red, the sea of reeds to open up and have you drown in it. 
because God doesn't want any of that little tiny thing in us. And it's called pride. Pride is what caused Pharaoh's heart to be hardened. It became so hardened, it became stiff-necked. He became stiff-necked. And as um, Proverbs 21, 29, 1 tell, tells us, that one who remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. Again, Proverbs 29, 1. Hardness is the result of refusing to shema, to listen. We need to listen. If you're not feeling his love, you're not listening to the voice of God. You're not listening to the word of God. You're not practicing Shema. Listen. We have to listen to our God. And when we listen, we get filled up with his truth. Love. It's what we see in this Pasha is a, um, a victory, a demonstration of the victory of the God of Israel over the gods of Egypt, chiefly Pharaoh himself. We also see the model of Yeshua sending us out by two, two by two. We see that. And you know, I said, well, where do you see it? In, in the Pasha, I don't see Yeshua there. And every single Pasha has Yeshua in it, except you have to look for it. It's in it in a thread. He is in each pasha, in each word, like, like a thread. So, for example, in Luke 10, verse 1, that's Luke 10, verse 1, Yeshua was saying, now after these things, the Lord assigned 70 others and sent them out by twos before him in every town and place where he himself was about to go. And um, you say, okay, that's in Luke. And it says that, that Yeshua was sending out two by two. So what does that have to do with the Pasha? Well, Moses and Aaron were sent arrow to be vessels of God destroying the kingdom of Egypt and destroying the Pharaoh, but he didn't send each one alone or only one, two by two. And that's what he does. That's his, so you see what he did in the Pasha, he did um, two, uh, 3,000 3, years later. 3,000 years later than that, he did. Uh, we also see that um, there's more power when two or more work together in unity. This is showing God's love. This is God sending them out together so Pharaoh can be destroyed because God wants Pharaoh to be destroyed because he wants to show his judgments to Pharaoh, his judgments to, to Egypt, his judgments to the world. Why does he want to show that? Because when you see the judgments of God, then your eyes open up and many will be fearful and say, oh my gosh, what's this? And they'll call upon the name of God and they'll say, I don't want those gods that I was serving. I don't want that. I want to serve you. What is your name? Tell me, and I will serve you. And he will tell us, and we will serve him. And he will take care of us in his fatherly love. He loves us. He really loves us. And he... Um, it's humbling and sobering to be called by the teacher. I call him the teacher in my book, Yeshua. He's the teacher to partner with him in this work of redemption. Pride and arrogance have no place in this partnership. 
If you are serving God, raise your hand. Okay. So many of you have raised your hand. I didn't see it, but I know there's so many of you serving God and, and you raised your hand. Understand that God has no partnership with pride. He crowns us with his righteousness and bestows upon us his authority and his seal of holiness. Then we start reading in Exodus 6, 6 to 8. And we read, we read, therefore say to B'nai Yisrael, I am Adonai. And I will bring you out. So there are four I wills that we're going to speak about. And those are the four I wills that have to do with the stages of redemption in the Passover Seder. And we'll just speak of that briefly now, but I'll just show you where it comes out. And then there's three other I wills that continue to show more but it's not in the past it's not in the passover seder but it's in this parsha and so god gives us a completion seven i wills where he's showing his love he's not showing it one time he's not showing it two times he's not showing it three times he's not showing it four times He's not showing it five times. He's not showing it six times. He's showing it seven times, which is saying, I am redeeming you. I am your Goel, your redeemer. And I love you. So I'm showing you this with the number seven completion. When I show you this, receive completely my love in your spirit. So he says, one, I will bring you out, and the Hebrew word is vahotseti, and that's the cup of sanctification. It's what sets us apart. Israel has been set apart. The nations who know Messiah have been set apart. Israel has been set apart just as Israel. And now when Israel coming to know their Messiah more and more and more, they continue being set apart. And when the nations who didn't know God come to know, they're, 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 not, they're not part of Israel when they don't know God, but when they come to know God through the Messiah, they are one with us. We are an achad. We are one. There's only one God. And they become commonwealth of israel so we have israel and the commonwealth of israel together as one and so he says i will bring you out from under the burdens of the egyptians that's a cup of sanctification and to be brought out under the under the burdens of the egyptians is is to be receiving his love and the role of the people is to follow god under his leadership we're supposed to follow god under if under yeshua's leadership we're supposed to follow god uh, we were supposed to follow god under moses leadership and we follow god under god's leadership you say well how do you know it's god's leadership well first of all yeshua and god they are they are one and the holy spirit is one but open up your bible and read the word and the word is one Amen. So that was number one. Number two, it was, I will deliver you the heat salt tea. That's the cup of judgment. And we are being delivered from judgment. So we're in a time in this world and even in, in, in our country, we're in a time in our country. Um, Israel is a time in their country. Um, 
the other countries, uh, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, uh, Africa, different countries in Africa, Ethiopia, um, all different countries all over Europe. There is chaos all over the world now. And people worry about, oh, we're being judged. We don't have to worry if we know Messiah, if, uh, worry about it if we know Messiah and have him in our heart. We don't have to worry. So that was, that was this, the second. I will deliver was the first. And um, the second was, uh, no, the first was I will bring you out. The second was I will deliver you from their bondage because he is our strength and protection in times of danger. So being our strength and protection, as it says in Exodus 6 to 6, 8, in times of danger, that's his love for us. We as parents will protect our children in whatever we can do, even when they grow up and, and they're, they're older. I mean, yeah. it's, it's amazing. They're on their own and they grow up so fast. We still protect them. We still love them and protect them. Then the third was, I will redeem you. V'ga'al ti, v'ga'al ti, I will redeem you. That ga'al means redemption, and goel means redeemer. And we have gone through redemption, ga'al, we've gone through it by the, when Yeshua came the first time, and he's in our heart. So we have been redeemed, and he will return, because he is the redeemer. And he paid the ransom and he secures the release. That's his love for us. And then after the dinner, we have the cup of messianic redemption. It's the third cup of wine. It's, it's praying for redemption. It's praying for Mashiach to come. And we have to keep telling them, especially those in Israel who are, are having problems um, in their beliefs now, we have to tell them that our Messiah has come and he's returning and he can live in your heart right now if you want to and your whole life will be changed. Yes, you may get banned from your community, but you didn't like your community anyway. So it doesn't matter because you are now in the community of the kingdom of God. And then the next I will is I will take you, Velachachti. We have the cup of praise and thanksgiving. I will take you to myself as a people, and I will be your God. Israel's destiny is that we are a people set apart from God. So that was for that was four of them. And, and, and then the fifth one was, I will be your God and just setting you apart. Think of it, the God of all creation, not Pharaoh, who's a, a little G God, who's a horrible, prayer, a prideful person, but think about it. God who created us, Yeshua, our Messiah, who was revealed even before we were created. He set us apart for his love, to give us his love, and he wants to receive love from us. So that's the fifth I will. And the sixth I will is I will bring you, so the four of them, and, and possibly the fifth, were for um, the Passover Seder, the four and the fifth were for the Passover Seder. And then the next two, I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob. So that's the sixth I will. And the seventh is I will give it to you as an inheritance because I am Adonai. So we are to rejoice in our inheritance. We are to rejoice in his love for us. We are to rejoice. And by the way, I said, put an asterisk um, 
next to El Shaddai when I read it earlier. And now we, uh, um, we're calling him Adonai because now in, in this Parsha in Exodus, he's starting to be called Adonai. But the thing is, all the patriarchs, um, the, the patriarchs all knew about the name El Shaddai. That's what they, that's what they knew. But they also knew the name of Adonai. They just didn't have, because you see it, you can go back and you can see it. I could give you many different scriptures. One that I can think of is uh, Genesis 15, 7 says Adonai. It didn't say El Shaddai, it said Adonai. Because Adonai is used, but they didn't have the revelation of who Adonai is. They didn't have that revelation that he's the Lord and he's the king. He's the, he's the one who takes care of us and, and, um, and he's in our life every, every day. They didn't have that revelation, but they had the revelation of God who created God, the, the, um, the all-sufficient one. Yeah. So, we, so these are all the seven times and that those seven times shows complete love that he has for us. Now let's read Exodus 6, 9 to 12 and verse and, um, and 9 to 12, Exodus 6, 9 to 12 and, tw and 29 and 30. So it's verse nine, Moses spoke this way to B'nai Yisrael, but they did not listen to him because of their broken spirit and cruel bondage. They couldn't even look at him when, especially when they, when they realized now, because he went to speak to Pharaoh, it is, it's much more difficult because they gave us more labor and were suffering more so they didn't even want to listen to him. And all they did was the na'akat, the na'akat, the groanings, the na'akat, the groanings and groanings. And we can't blame them because they, they'd be groaning because life was getting harder and harder, more and more difficult. In verse 10, so Adonai told Moses, go speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he will let B'nai Israel go out of his land. But Moses, but Moses, um, verse 12, Moses said to Adonai, B'nai Israel have not listened to me, so how would Pharaoh listen to me? I who have uncircumcised lips. And the uncircumcised lips can be interpreted as uh, some scholars have interpreted as like a stutter. And others have interpreted it as that unholy lips. And um, it's like what, what maybe, when we know the Lord, we, our lips are circumcised and we have holy lips with that, but we're human beings and sometimes unholy things come out of our lips. Like when you gossip about someone, and you don't even bother to find out if it's true, but you're gossiping about someone, that's unholy lips. Those, that is uncircumcised lips. So, so uncircumcised lips can mean like just in a circumcision, there is dead skin. Well, uncircumcised lips can mean that there's dead speech coming out of your lips. So then verse 29, Adonai said to Moses, I am Adonai, I need Adonai. Tell Pharaoh everything that I tell you. But Moses said to Adonai again, I am of uncircumcised lips, so how would Pharaoh listen to me? And then uh, Exodus 7, verses 1 and 2. So Adonai said to Moses, see, I have set you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, will be your prophet. You are to speak all that I command you, and Aaron, your brother, is to speak to Pharaoh so that he will let the Nay Israel go out of this land. Okay, so what do we see here? Another thread about Yeshua. Um, Mo uh, Moses has said, and there will rise a prophet like me. 
with the word of God will be on his heart and he will speak it and you are required to, to follow it. And so what did, what did Moses say? Uh, and what did the word say that, that I just read? You are to speak all that I command you. You are to speak all that I command you. And we read in John 5, verse 30, I can do nothing on, Yeshua says, I can do nothing on my own. Just as I hear from Abba, from my father, I judge and my judgment is just for I do not seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And it's the same thing. Moses must listen to, to Hashem. Hashem speaks to Moses. Moses speaks it to Pharaoh. It's, it's, he has to speak what God said, nothing else, just what God said. And he is not, he is not judging. He's just speaking, but he's not seeking his will. He's seeking the will of the one who sent him. That was Moses and that was Yeshua. Both saying the same thing. Amen. Yeshua is in every single Torah portion. So we have also, if we look at Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 9, beginning at verse 16, going to 21. But they, our ancestors, became arrogant. They stiffened their neck and did not obey your mitzvot. They refused to obey and did not remember your wonders that you did among them. Instead, they became stiff-necked and in their rebellion appointed a leader in order to return to their bondage. But you're a God of forgiveness, merciful and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Abounding in love. Therefore, you did not abandon them even when they made a cast image of a calf for themselves. And they said, this is what you up from Egypt. Can you imagine that? And you didn't get rid of them. You still love them. You still love them and forgave them. And that forgiveness was shown on Yom Kippur, the original Yom Kippur, when, when you gave when God gave Moses the new tablets. And, and they had said about this calf, this is your God who brought you up from Egypt or when they committed great blasphemies. Yet in your great compassion, you did not abandon them in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud by day did not depart from above them, guiding them in the way, not the pillar of fire by night, nor, nor the pillar of fire by night, illuminating the way they should go. You also gave your good ruach to teach them, your good spirit to teach them. And that's what, again, when Moses said, when Yeshua comes, when the Messiah comes, he will send forth his spirit and will teach them, teach them the word of God. You did not withhold your manna from their mouth and you gave them water for their thirst. For 40 years, you sustained them in the desert. They lacked nothing, their garments did not wear out and their feet did not swell. And now we look at um, 20, um, again, that was Nehemiah 9, 16 to 21. And now we're going to read um, 26 to 31. But as soon as they were at rest, they returned to doing evil before you. You see, God gave them the blessings and they had horrific times. And then what happened? Then, and they were following, they were following the word. Then they had it easier. Didn't have the chores. They were, had their freedom because being in the Lord gives you freedom. And what did they do? As soon as they were at rest, they returned to doing evil before you. Therefore, you abandoned them into the hand of their enemies who ruled over them. That's why there was the destruction of the first and second temple. The first was because of idolatry, and the second was because of Sinat Hanam, 
um, uh, the hatred, the hatred amongst brothers. When they repented and cried out to you, you heard, you heard from heaven, and according to your compassion, you delivered them many times. And it goes on and and keeps speaking about how he's always delivered them, and then they went away from him, and he delivered them again. Who loves you, baby? The answer is our God loves us. And don't be blinded to it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive what he is, what he is saying. And then we also read uh, Ezekiel 29. When this is in this is in the question. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 28, 25 to 26. Ezekiel 28, 25 to 26. Thus says Adonai Elohim, when I have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered and show my holiness through them in the eyes of the nations, then they will live in their own land and I give, which I gave to They will live safely there and they will build houses and plant vineyards they will live securely when I have executed judgments on all those around them that treated them with contempt. So they will know that I am Adonai, Ani Adonai, their God. So he showing his love always. We keep on, we keep on walking away from him, but we keep and uh, but he doesn't abandon us. He loves us and tries to draw us back. And he does, and we come back, and we have that love and that unity in him. And then we have Ezekiel 29, verses 1 to 4. And it says, on the 12th day of the 10th month of the 10th year, and the 10th month is the month of Tevet, the word of Adonai came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, this wasn't... Um, the same Pharaoh from the time of the original Passover. No, this is um, many dynasties lay, later. And um, it, his, name, his name was Hophra. And um, it says, Behold, I am against you, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great crocodile lying in his rivers, that crocodile is also called the dragon, the crocodile, the dragon, or demonic spirit, or Leviathan, right. the great crocodile, the, the, the Leviathan, the dragon, lying in his rivers, who says, my Nile, like it's his Nile, his river, my Nile is my own. I made it for myself. I will put hooks in your jaws. Oh, and then, and then, that's what God says. He, he said, my Nile. But then, then he says, my Nile is my own. I made it for myself. I will put hooks in your jaws and make the fish of your stream stick to your scales. I will haul you up from within your rivers and all the fish of your streams will stick to your scales. I will leave you in the desert and all the fish of your streams You will fall on the open field. Then we understand that the, that the Nile overflowed its banks periodically and brought fertility to the land. The arrogant Pharaoh personified his country. He became, he became the person of the country. He personified the country, the evil of the country, just as did the Prince of Tyre, the same thing. And uh, uh, his rivers refer to the tributaries and canals of the main river. And like the Prince of Tyre, Pharaoh thought of himself as more than human. His position was exalted in the world at that time. Hooks in the jaws as the crocodile is captured, the dragon is captured and drawn by hooks from the river. The spirit, Leviathan, has to be captured. Only Yeshua can capture and can get rid and will get rid of the Leviathan spirit forever. Amen. So will Egypt be defeated. She will be defeated 
by her enemies and lose the wealth yielded by her river. The fishes which adhere to the scale of the crocodile typify the nation, both king and people. Both king and people are considered the fish because it said the fish will perish. Both king, the, the pharaoh, and the people will perish because Egypt stands for a worldly dark kingdom. And that was the Haftarah, and now the Brit Hadashah, Romans 9, 16 to 17 and 20. And that is, so then it does not depend on the one who wills or the one who strives, but on God who shows Amen. mercy. Amen. For scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose, I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you. So my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. But who in the world are you, O oh man, who talks back to God? Who are you? Who are you? So in the Midrash Haggadol, I'm going to finish up now. In the Midrash Haggadol, there's a collection of Yemenite Jewish commentary on Torah. The Jews are fearful of inciting Pharaoh further, so they protest to Moses. Can a slave serve two masters? And they, they say they are enslaved to Pharaoh and they're afraid to transgress his laws. But when you see what they do, they're not afraid to transgress the laws of the Most High God. Who is this uncircumcised Pharaoh? Who is this? Yeshua says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. Matthew 6, 24. That's Matthew 6, 24. Israel could not both serve both Pharaoh and God. Neither can we serve two masters. Are we serving the world? Are we getting involved in all the worldly things and and reading things and letting letting all these crazy theories fill our mind and 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 bring anxiety to us and bring fear to us or are we focusing on the one god of abraham isaac and jacob that's what god wants us that's what god wants us to do as yeshua walked among us demonstrating miracle signs and wonders driving out demons and delivering god's people from oppression he was like Moses. Moses came first. And well, uh, obviously Yeshua was already there first, but, but Moses came, the story of Moses came first and he was walking around and the Lord was using him for miracles, miracles against Egypt and Pharaoh, miracles in the wilderness, miracles against his magicians and the gods of Egypt. But his ultimate goal was the redemption of Israel. And Yeshua walked around like Moses. Amen. So I want to end with this thought taken from Exodus 6 9. Moses spoke this way to B'nai Israel, but they did not listen to him because of their broken spirit and cruel bondage and the groanings. And we have to compare that to our lives, to our jobs, to our ministries, to our failed promises. So many of us had uh, prophetic words said over, said over us that never came true. It doesn't matter. Our relationship is not, has not with the world. Our relationship is with the God of all creation and his kingdom. We're all together, a mishpacha, a family in the kingdom of God. So let's finish with quoting my friend Robert Zimmerman, Bob Dylan. He might be the devil, or it might be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. But thanks be to God that though you were slaves of sin, you became obedient from the heart to that form of teaching to which you were committed. And having been freed from sin, 
you became slaves of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Awesome, awesome, awesome message, Rabbi. Thank you. This is the time in our service where we take an offering for Shuva Yisrael. You know, we are a worldwide ministry and we provide and give to Holocaust survivors, people in America, in the nations in Israel and all over. And I want to remind you about the scripture in Philippians 2, which says, do nothing out of selfishness or conceit, but with humility, consider others as more important than yourselves, looking out not only for your own interests, but also the interests of others. And here at Shuvi Israel, we are always concerned about the poor and the needy. And if you remember Joseph, when he felt that he was supposed to gather provisions for several years, he never ever thought that that would be for his family. And so we here at Shuva, we are gathering provisions and we are giving financial help to all those who need, and we want to have enough for the future to give those that come up unexpectedly. So we thank all those that partner with us already and we ask you to partner with us now. And you can go to Shuva Yisrael of the Palm Beaches at Pay and get PayPal, or to our free Temple Connect newsletter, which we put out every week. We'll tell you all the things that we're doing in our ministry, and you can hit the donate button. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We were blessed and honored to have you. And we look forward to this week. And do not be anxious. Do not be fearful. Because who loves you? Who loves you? He loves us. And we love you too. Yeshua loves us. Yes. Yeshua Hallelujah. Us. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. And we love you too. And Shavua tov. Have a great week and be blessed. Yes. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his camp and grant you shalom, shalom, b'shem Yeshua, mishikeno, b'shah shalom. May he grant you peace, perfect peace in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Amen and amen. And we pray, Shalu Shalom, Yerushalayim. Be safe, stay healthy, be blessed. Shavua Tov. We'll see you next week, next Friday night at 7.30, next Saturday at 10.30. Have an awesome week. And don't forget, send in that Shabbat Shalom to us so that we can pray for you. Okay, be blessed.